the JBA physics class four times now, and I really enjoy it because for me as a college professor, it's a unique opportunity to be in a, a different kind of classroom with students who are very eager to learn and very eager to volunteer for, for a, to be part of a demonstration or have, they have lots of questions about anything we talk about. And that's really refreshing for me to get their perspective on the world and to see their eagerness and their, their curiosity and their hunger for, for knowing the answer and knowing why things happen. Normally I would say the labs, but I think this year I like the lectures better because it helps me, it, it just like helps me understand the things I've read, the things we've done in labs, it helps it bring it all together and it really helps me understand more. The main reason I'm taking a college class is because I, I, it bothers me when I don't understand things and all the additional help I can get any time helps me a lot. And I'm taking physics because I love science and I don't know what branch of science I'd like to I'd like to be a scientist when I grow up. I don't know what branch of science, but and this helps me like decide. I think the students probably enjoy the labs a lot more than the lecture because it is an opportunity to to use some equipment and to to see the physics instead of just read about it or hear about it, but to really see it as as a living and you know, moving kind of thing that you know, fits in with the real world experience. We spend about two or three hours a day in the laboratory testing the basic theories, or even sometimes building some projects and doing the experiment first and hoping to verify what we've seen or measured by some mathematics and some theories. Toward the end of the course, we, we make some rockets. We build mono rockets, and we use the basic laws of Newton's forces and mathematics of, of motion to predict how high they will go when they're launched straight up. And then we go out, we, we, we measure the, the mass of the rockets, we launch them, and then we measure how high they go and compare. Uh, Being able to understand a lot of things that go on, that go on in the world, because I mean, it helps me understand why things work. Just, it's pretty neat, I mean, just to they say, be able to look at something and say, yeah, I know how that works. It's, al it's also nicer because they, uh, they don't teach you things that you already know. A lot of times when you're at school, they teach you things that you already know, but and they, here they know that you know a lot more. So they talk to you at a different level. I also hope that each student would leave and be able to look at the world a little bit differently than when they began. They say, well, what is happening here? And you know, can I identify the physics and the science that's taking place? And, um, not lose an appreciation for some natural wonder, but gain a deeper appreciation, realizing that that you know we we can really search and and understand the environment and the universe we live in. So I hope that it opens their eyes to everyday things, the technology around them, the world around them, and causes them to think in a, a physics sense about some of those in, um, events.
once I have gotten them to the point where they feel comfortable, they're much more willing to take risks than some college students are. I think in many cases our educational system stifles taking risks because people are afraid they'll come up with the wrong answer. And these kids are not afraid to come up with the wrong answer. They know that that's the way they're going to learn. So I hope that we can enhance that. I think it's really an experience academically and socially. You get to meet people from all over the, all over the country. And I mean, you, you get a taste of so many different cultures just by coming and meeting new people in your class and other classes. I mean, if you talk to your roommates and they're in other classes, they teach you things you've never learned before. And the, the instructors talk to you, not at you, which is a big thing for me. We visited an art gallery in Des Moines, and it, it seems so different from when I've been to art galleries at home since I learned everything I've learned in this class. I've set this class up to be almost exactly like a college-level studio class. And I think one of the things that the students are finding out is that there's an incredible amount of work involved. It takes a lot of time to get a good product. And especially when you're trying to build skills, and that's one of the major differences between a studio class and a lecture class, is that most students come to a studio class without having had the time to develop the skills. Most students have been writing since they were five, six, seven years old, but they have not been making art since then, although they have had some art activity. Uh, any studio class involves a lot of things, and since we're working out of a liberal arts context, we want to make sure that the students um, have an opportunity to speak extemporaneously. They, they have to write, uh, they have to do some research, and obviously they need to do some studio work, so we try to balance those things out. The predominant amount of time is spent in the studio, obviously. But we do have lectures, we have critiques, um, we have sessions where we write, they visit the library and do research. So I think it's a very well-rounded um, opportunity. You don't get this kind of challenge um, during the regular school year where you're mixed with um, other students from all different um, levels of ability. Here, um, most of us are all on the same level. We enjoy the same things. Um, it's more intellectual here, but we also have a great time, so I enjoy it. Um, I'm really looking forward to bringing the smaller things home, like my watercolors and my graphite drawings and showing my parents and my friends, because I, I've made a lot of improvements as I've been here. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. Um, I, I think the most entertaining thing about uh, aspect of this class is watching the students come to grips with their own ability level. And some of them that came into the class thinking, I cannot draw, I cannot paint, have done some wonderful things. And others of them that thought they had a skill in, in one area um, found that they had a strength maybe in another that overshadowed it. And I'm seeing a lot of students that have a wonderful sense of color um, and a wonderful sense of gesture and never realized that they had that. So I think the discoveries that we're making make this a lot of fun.
I'm having a lot of fun with JBA because the students make it worthwhile coming in each day to teach. Their enthusiasm and their, their energy has been helpful. That would keep me coming back. The activities that they're involved in outside class would keep me coming back. Those have been interesting, watching them at the soccer game, hearing about what they've done at the dances, hearing about their documentations, their hall meetings, their trips to Walmart, etc. And all those have been interesting. Yeah. Um, I like it a lot better because here I'm with basically intellectual equals, and back at home I can get grouped with anything from the smartest of people to the less intelligent individuals. And here I'm with people of the same thinking ability, and the questions they ask are not as redundant, and everyone has really good ideas, and everyone feels free to share them with everyone else because they know that no one will laugh. The JVA students are, are a break from teaching college students in that their energy level is absolutely tremendous. And that's been refreshing. The amount of energy that they have doesn't wear you out, but I have had to increase my nap time after, after class every day because of the amount of energy that they have. They're very, very motivated. They work hard. They're self-directed. Um, I think they're more aware of what they do well and what they need to develop more than, than average students um, and try to push themselves. I don't they try to work within limitations, but also stretch those limitations. And it's been very, very nice to see that they also have been very friendly to each other and worked well as groups. Well, the first year I came, I came because I thought it would be interesting. I needed a challenge. School doesn't provide a challenge at all for me. And I decided to come here, and I got hooked on it, so I have to come back. And by the time I've come back this year, I love it so much that I can't imagine not coming. Being in class, it's a lot less structured. You have more room to think freely. Um, you can express your ideas more. And since everybody's like on the same intellect level, it's, it's um, you, you have more challenging discussions and you're more likely to get into little tiffs and arguments and stuff. I'd like them to go ahead and leave the class with a sense of both what they are able to do as writers, where their strengths are as writers, what patterns they have as writers, and how to use those patterns to their advantage. Some of them may actually leave the class being Nobel Prize writers. I know one of them in, well, one of the students in the application for JBA said that he or she would become a, an award-winning writer and wanted to be able to say that JBA had given them their first break as a writer. Um, so we'll wait and see whether or not that first Nobel Prize winning novel comes out of JBA experiences. The kids are just really great as students. They, there's so many different personalities in the room, and they bring their personalities from, you know, they get it from their parents, but there's also regional personalities that they take on that's real interesting, and it's fun to see them mingle together and share their different ideas and personalities. And they, um, 
they're real, pretty strong-willed, most of them, and uh, very um, achievement-oriented. They want to do well. It's self-paced. You don't have to. You have to listen to the teacher. If you if you know your material, you just get tests on it, so you don't have to uh, sit around while other people don't get what they're doing. It, it's easier to work in with that than having everybody in different level or. You know, if some people don't get it, then the teacher has to take time out and teach them and stuff. So it, you, you learn more here. I like being away from home and, and um, just sort of being on my own. So It's like you're at college, but, I mean, it's a little more strict and stuff. And you get to, you get to learn stuff that you probably wouldn't learn in your own school. And it's, it's a lot of fun. In the college algebra class, um, we basically work self-paced. We've got three different textbooks that they're working in, a beginning, an intermediate, and a college-level algebra. And it's, we place them depending upon how much background they've had in algebra. And they work at their own pace, and we'd like them to complete chapter tests with a 90% accuracy at least, and they're doing wonderful on those. And then in order to break up so that they don't get stuck with their little noses in the book all the time, we. Um, bring in fun problems and to do in one in the morning and usually one in the afternoon and today we're going to work on a problem that is baffling to <laughs> anyone to think about we're going to talk about the circumference of the earth and if you were to take a piece of string go down to the equator and go all the way around the earth and pull it as tight as you can so it sits snug right next to the earth and then take that piece of string and increase it by three feet we want to know how much space there's going to be between that string and the earth if you were to get the string to go equally the same distance around the earth. So it's another circle with that extra three feet. Could you put a piece of paper in between the string and the earth? What could you do? That's a, a problem we're going to work on today. Well, I just like the experience here, and I especially like meeting all the new people. In the past three years I've been here, I met so many people and learned so many things, like what they do in their free time and stuff. And it's, it's more fun than being at home. Our, our teachers and our preceptors are, like, really good, and they can explain problems to us if we don't understand. And I like that it's self-paced, too. So, you know, we don't have to, like, worry about cramming for a test. We can just do it when we want to do it and when we feel like doing it. I, I just like the people, and if this is what the college is going to be like, and I'm going to meet these kind of people, I'm going to have a, a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun working with JVA. I worked as a preceptor for three years when I was a student here at Northeast, and I thoroughly enjoyed that experience. And it's really neat to work on it on JVA from this angle as an instructor. When the students leave my class, I'd like them to have an appreciation for mathematics and to appreciate the different areas that mathematics covers. That's why we want to do so many of the different enrichment problems and show them the vast bounds of mathematics and how it, it's incorporated in everything and how there's some really cool, fun things and that all mathematicians aren't weirdos that are out there <laughs> working. So. 
I like teaching. I like seeing people's eyes light up when they make connections. That's really enjoyable to me. Exactly. It's also a way of, uh, okay, of we, we will discuss me Wednesday forcing Thursday myself to master the material I've studied in a way that allows other people who aren't familiar with the topic to when comprehend it. I'm learning a lot about what the war was actually started over and how it escalated. Um, not necessarily not all the strategy in it, but more like how it did, what it, how it affected home, as well as how it affected Vietnam. And so, it's it's not been a strategy strategy class. It's been how it how the war totally affected everything. In the class, I, we get to do a lot of discussion and debating. And of course, I'm learning a lot of stuff that I haven't, and I didn't know about it. I knew I didn't know that much about Vietnam. And then overall, I'm just I'm having a real good time. They like a little uh, a slower schedule uh, because they're not used to absorbing that kind of material that quickly. Uh, they like to be engaged. I find these students like. The, the visual stimulation that they get with the videos. And then they like the background information so they can see the connection. A number of students said I knew nothing about Vietnam, and now I understand a little bit why, about why I hear about it on the radio occasionally, or somebody says something that had no meaning to me. They like understanding that. They like understanding what about uh, uh, something about uh, a period that was so important to their parents, and in some cases, uh, grandparents know. Well, and, um, basically, what the Vietnam War did to America and what it did to the Minifada, how it divided the American opinion, because, you know, like, before the Vietnam War, you know, what, what the government said to do, the people did, but, you know, now the government says to do something and a lot of people rather, like, criticize it. It's kind of Vietnam just kind of shattered that. Well, because it's like three weeks on your own, you get to see what it's like in college. No parents, you know. Preceptors, it's almost like they're your older brothers or uncles or aunts, you know. It's just kind of like, almost like a vacation in a certain sense, and you get to hang out with pretty cool people that are your age. I want them to leave with a better understanding of why they live the way they do in our society today. That is, uh, why there seems to be less unity and uh, less consensus about our foreign policy, for example. Why there seems to be this tension uh, between people's different ideologies. I, I trace that uh, primarily to the Cold War and the Vietnam War, the, the breakdown of our, con our sense of consensus, agreement about what we were all about in foreign policy. But I want them to get in the, uh, the mindset that they're young adults. The course material itself is really intense. It's not a child course. And they're really children in a way. So they're really stretching because they're coming to grips with really intense material. And I think they'll be mature as a result of that, and I hope they do. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Hello. Hi. Got any candy for us? Yeah, where's Frost? Are you serious? Oh my God. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. My, I'm talking to my mom. Hey, Alan, get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no. Hi, Mom. Hey, 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 Mom. I'm um, done. Come on. Yeah, uh, I take picture and show her she's missing her. Tony! Yeah, my man. Yeah, I'm boxing. <laughs> Wait, I have these nasty granola bars with almonds. You can have as many as you want. Really? Yeah. You guys clean? Hey, well, this, oh. hey, this is all my oh, stuff. Right in here. I like to have all this. This is mine. She's love candy. That was me. Is there any candy? Oh, yes, yes. Any candy? 
You toss it and you are there. Yes. Look at her go. There. You are a turtle. I love them. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll take Thank it. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Cool. This is Quark, and that's Lieutenant Dash from Deep Space Nine, and that's some really cool bread. Quark! Yeah. I don't know, Bree gave it to us. That one for is you? So cool. oh. One for you? I will treasure it forever. There you go. And one for you. Mm -hmm. oh, it feels funny. That is an incredible toothbrush. Oh, how's it work? Yeah. Hi. Hi. It's like not as close to me. Oh, really oh, good. good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Hey. Hi. Oh, it's just you. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> They're, they're eager. They are not just smart, but uh, some of them are quite wise, too. They understand. Uh, they have a lot of common sense. They, they're quick to pick up on, on connections. They don't, just, they don't think always in a linear fashion. Uh, they can see, they, they, understand, they understand references I'll make. They'll make connections by analogy and so on. They're very creative, too. In school, I, it's, everything kind of comes easy, and I kind of wanted something to challenge me, in a way. And this is very challenging, so I kind of like it. And plus, I like the culture part, because we get to learn about the ancient Roman civilization. I think that's kind of neat. I'm having fun. I'm meeting a lot of people that I wouldn't meet if I didn't come here, and they're like really neat, so. It's also nice, because, you know, we're, we're all kind of smart, so it's not like we have anything to prove, really, to each other. Latin is a basis for the five Romance languages, including French and Italian and Spanish. Um, and also, uh, by, by studying Latin, by learning Latin, you're really developing some, some of the higher thinking skills. You're developing, uh, first of all, a discipline that, that I cannot imagine any other way that it can be developed to such a high degree. You're forced to look, forced to look at a language that's very, very different from ours, and um, you are required to uh, focus on precise details to work step by step as a very methodical sort of language. Secondly, if you study Latin, not only are you preparing for other foreign languages, but you're developing <clears throat> your English reading skills and your English vocabulary. About two-thirds of all English words are derived from Latin and, and Greek forms. But thirdly, uh, one of the beneficial things about studying Latin is that you learn the culture with it. Um, we're learning a people that is a, a people that is responsible for much of our modern Western culture. It's fun, but difficult. It's kind of hard conjugating in verbs and declining nouns. But then it's fun learning about how the Romans used to live and learning the language. Here you don't get made, of, made fun of for being fun or smart, and you can be who you want to be and you get a chance to just be loose and have fun. It's the best time of my life. Uh, what I, I want the students to leave elementary Latin uh, with a basic understanding of, of reading skills and they have developed that but eventually they are going to lose that unless they start taking Latin again in, uh, in their high school or college careers. Uh, but what we're really focusing on is that they do develop skills that they're going to be using in critical thinking outside of Latin, but, but everywhere. We want them to come out of this class with the ability to pick up a foreign language, to see how a language other than English is spoken, to see the thought processes behind the language. We want them to come out um, with um, skills of analysis, skills of interpretation, and things of that sort. So it's not language itself that we're interested in. Uh, it's not Latin itself, I should rather say, that we're interested in, but it's the processes that are developed when you study something such as Latin.
with Amy. Check in with Amy. Everybody. Got my four. The way I approach the course is to imagine that I am teaching the material to a group of college students. Now obviously we can't cover as much material, but the same level of explanation, the same level of lecturing, the same level of activities are built in to the course as well. And for the most part, they perform near or better than some college classes that I've had. In Shakespeare, you get a lot of everything. Like, I wanted to take art or writing or something like that. But you get a little everything. We, we write some of our own poems. We do writing in our journals every day. And we do acting at the same time and act in different plays. We do a lot of, like, spontaneous acting. Like, we just read the lines and things like that. And we try to act. And then we learn about the history during the Elizabethan times and about many of Shakespeare's plays. It's very, it's very fun. <laughs> that would just be a little thing, like one play we'd study the whole time, and I think we're going to do six plays, and we're actually going to put one on for the whole Joseph Baldwin Academy. Uh, one thing that I've been doing each year is having the students involve themselves in performance activities, reciting sonnets and performing selected scenes. And each year we've done the final scene from A Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, the Pyramus and Thisbe play within the play. And I think it's important to have them do that so that they can actually say the lines, act them out, and watch the drama <laughs> unfold. Because we must always remember that this is drama first. And studying it and analyzing it comes second. In St. Louis, the other performance that we attended was a compilation of selected scenes and reading of sonnets from Shakespeare. And uh, in that case, we were able to see a variety of short scenes from nine or 10 plays. And that too was followed by a, uh, a post-show discussion with the director and his actors as well. Because it's a challenge, and it's, it's fun to go away for three weeks. It's fun to meet a bunch of new people. And it's, it's fun to be surrounded by intelligent people, you know, because you don't always get that at school. And um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a college course, but it's, like, exciting and stuff. And it's neat because he doesn't treat you like a kid. He treats you, treats you like a college student, like an adult. And so it's... It makes you feel older, and it, it doesn't put you down or anything. It, you know, it helps you to think older because they treat you older, and it, it's just, it makes you feel better. It's exciting that way. <laughs> I think this experience is a wonderful opportunity for college professors to teach their specialty to a group of gifted and talented junior high school students, and I feel that I'm privileged that I've been able to do this in the academy. I think I would like them to leave the academy knowing that there's more to read and learn about Shakespeare and that they could attempt to do it and do it pretty well on their own and to go back to their schools and help their peers with the material as well.
what you saw in this 10 minute film represents what we call the JBA experience. It's a blend of rigorous academics, of living in close quarters with people from different parts of the nation and different backgrounds, perspectives, personalities, viewpoints, of building friendships and of actively learning about respect for each other, respect for diversity. So all experiences in these three weeks, I believe, were truly learning experiences, building character, as well as academic knowledge and skills. I think, parents, that you will see a positive change in your children when you take them home with you tomorrow. We can't claim they'll keep their rooms any neater, as you saw from the video, but I think we can claim some positive changes in knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And you all should be proud of the achievements of your children in these last three weeks.